Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. It is a very sunny, hot, warm day, so I apologize if there's some glare, but in today's video we're talking about everything you need to know, absolutely everything, about the 2028 Subaru WRX STI EV. Yes, we are talking about the electric STI that will be coming in 2028. We're going to talk about everything that we know so far, what we've heard from Subaru, what we've heard from other reputable sources, everything that is for sure information out in the market today. We're gonna to talk about everything and let's get straight into it. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I appreciate all the support and if you wanna further support the channel beyond just subscribing, feel free to check out JXR Performance. It really helps the channel. Thank you for the folks that have been supporting. I am, uh, I do need to stop at the post office today as you guys can see in the back of the car. You guys have obviously been supporting me because the back of the car is full of boxes of parts going out to you guys. So if you followed any Subaru news, you'll know that the 2028 STI EV or electric STI has been something that has really been talked about in the last couple of weeks. Let me give you some background and history about what's happened and what's going on. So in on June 5th, I believe of 2023, Subaru Pacific in Hawthorne, California came out with an article saying that we were gonna see the next generation STI come out in 2028 and it would be the WRX STI EV. And they basically made the claim that Subaru would be producing an electric STI and that is coming from, you know, a Subaru outlet. So there is something to be said there. We will dive into that shortly, but let's just look at the timeline. And in the beginning of May, end of April of this year, so only like six week, five or six weeks ago, some reputable uh, you know, automotive news organizations started reporting pretty specific information about the 2028 electric STI. Specifically, a great example is Car and Driver, a very reputable pundit news organization went as far as putting one article out announcing it in early May, and at the end of May, early June, put out an article going as far as talking about not just the fact that a 2028 electric STI was coming, but talking about trim levels and projected pricing, which means that you could go as far as saying, you know, maybe they have some information that the rest of us don't. This has also been covered by a multitude of organizations. So. With that said, what do we actually know here? We know that Subaru, during the announcement of the VBWX, which is what I'm in right now, said that the STI would be halted to pursue the potential of electrification so that it could fit into the general Subaru fleet. We know that from a fact from Subaru. We also know that the 2025 WRX TS has been announced, which really just means from Subaru, the fact that we're definitely not getting a STI generation for the VB chassis. We're definitely going to be waiting for the next generation if we want to see or when we will see an STI or whether it's an STI or a WRX STI. Now we have the information from you know the dealer in in California and basically reported from a few dealers if you dive deep enough on their blogs which means that there is some information coming from Subaru how real is it? You know, you're not really sure, but they are an authorized. I mean, they're like, these are coming from dealers that are selling new Subarus. So they're authorized dealers. And there's some, you know, it's not just that one specific dealer. There's other dealers that have posted about this. If you dive into, uh, you know, postings and they're pretty high volume dealers. So, you know, these aren't, you know, small shops, let's say, but we still don't have like, let's say, I mean, maybe you could call that proof, but you know, my brain says, let's give it time. And obviously I did, you know, I've talked about the electric STI over a few videos over the past year, but I wanted to wait. Um, but now we've had this flurry from multiple credible sources that it's definitely coming. Now I want to throw caution to the wind and say, it could be a view grab. And I know that from the YouTube side and from the smaller smaller blog side and smaller posting side, it probably is about views, right? I mean, like everything is. That's how this industry works. But when places like Car and Driver put up multiple articles where they are, you know, staking their level of credibility on this kind of stuff, and they're not the only ones. I'm just using them as an example because that's the most easily derived article. If you type in 2028 Subaru WRX STI EV, 
the Subaru and Car and Driver articles will come up first, and then you'll get the multitude of forums and YouTube videos discussing everything under the sun about the electric STI. So I'm just using them as an example. But what does that even mean? What, what's happening? Well, I think there are two possibilities here. I think one possibility is Subaru is doing what they have done historically, where they actually start to leak a little bit of information so that people are prepared, it softens the blow, it gets people excited, it kind of does all those things. And if you're saying, if you're thinking that's unlikely, it's actually something Subaru's done multiple times. Most critically, they did it in, uh, you know, basically when engine changes happened. You know, it was a big, a big example is when Subaru took the WX to the FA20 motor. You know, they, you know, they, we know historically they intentionally leaked some information, maybe not leaked, but it trickled through to get people excited about it, but also to feel things out. And I mean, I'm sure it gives a lot of data back to Subaru as they're you know, delivering the final sales pitch, let's say to the consumer market. Um, but this has happened a few times with Subaru. So I think that there is a solid chance that uh, people do know something, right? And maybe uh, you know this is a little bit more credible than we'd like to think. Now, uh, with that said, I also think that there's a possibility that we could just have an instance where one thing slips through the cracks from one person and everyone in the consumer market has extrapolated from one mistake from one person slipping through the cracks. So beyond that, we don't really know anything. What's interesting though is the reaction from the community. You can tell people are excited. Now, a lot of that is coming from this community from a volume and numbers perspective has changed. The demographics of the Subaru, specifically the WRX and STI community, has changed with the VBWX. The 2022, 2023, 2024, and going to be the 2025 WRX are some of the best selling years of the WRX or STI platform. The numbers don't lie, the demand doesn't lie, it is a reality, and it's also the most profit generating or revenue generating, let's say, model years, not just because of inflation, but just because of the numbers and what they're charging for these cars and what people are willing to pay and how much the differentials in trims are costing. It's just a reality. So people are excited about it. And it's interesting because I think it's really splitting the community. You have the people that care about maybe certain aspects of the car and you have people that care about different aspects of the car. What I can say for certainty and what I think most of you guys are probably feeling watching this video is again, one of two things. One, you either think it's absolute lunacy that they're going electric with the STI and it's gonna ruin everything that the STI meant or does or anything like that. Or you're in the fact of being like, awesome, a rally driven electric vehicle. This is gonna be so cool. Straight answer is, I don't know how I feel, honestly. It's honestly, my my opinion is it's gonna very much depend on what the WRX does. And I think, unfortunately, my guess is that the next generation WRX, and that's probably the most important thing to talk about, the next generation WRX, I bet, still is under 300 horsepower, which means it'll be disappointing. Now, if it were to be a 400 horsepower WRX, which it will not, just based on the volume of cars that they're selling right now, then I don't care if it goes electric. Now, I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna create an electric motor that is maybe equivalent to 400 horsepower or something like that. People are gonna be spoked, stoked, lots of low end tor torque. It's gonna deliver some level of the STI experience with the rest of the performance tuning and suspension. But that what they're gonna lose and what I think Subaru still fails to understand is so much of this community is based on the aftermarket. And if they put an electric STI on the market, you know, it's not tunable, right? There's no extra power to be made. So they're not just crushing the performance side of an entire line of their cars, but they're taking away what makes the STI stand out. Because I think that we can all agree, even the STI purists, that if you want to really utilize the STI and have it for the reason you'd have it, you're building it, right? I mean, beyond that, it's hard to, like, especially with the VBWX, it's hard to, like, have a conversation about um, you know, unless you're really making power, but that's where the, you know, that's where the STI stands out. You have the infrastructure and the platform to make real power and the back end infrastructure of the aftermarket and all these things. And historically that's what made the STI so exciting, such a leader, you know, in the sports car movement and something that will go down in history, right? I mean, that's just a reality statement. So the short answer of all of this, and I feel like this video is, although it might sound like we don't have a ton of critical information, I think this video is extremely important in the fact that, you know, 
we are likely seeing the first signs of what could be an electric STI. This is as good as it's gonna get until a year from now because Subaru has just announced the TSWRX, which means that typically, historically, they have an eight to 10 month life cycle before their big announcement. They always seem to maintain an eight to 10 month gap between large announcements between cars. They've done it with almost every model year. They've done it with the WRXs, the STIs for like the last you know, 15 years almost. So we're gonna sit here for another eight to 10 months this is probably the leak if it's gonna happen. So I think that if I were a betting person, I would say that this is probably relatively credible or in the right direction, and we are going to see an electric STI come out in 2028. We are not gonna see a hybrid. I don't think that there's any reality of that. I think it's gonna be either all electric or not electric at all. And I think we're gonna see the WRX come out as mo even more of a commuter focused vehicle. And I think that the STI, when it comes out, is gonna be a push to pull the folks that are looking for what I'm looking for out of the WRX into the STI and make the STI more of the standout, like I said before, the standout of like, I'm a commuter, but I want a little bit more fun, but not so much I'm in a perfectly capable and performance vehicle. Um, it's amazing what traffic can do with a little bit of flashing lights. There is quite literally, three fire trucks on the side of the highway. Actually, it looks like a car was on fire, so that'll be interesting. Um, but there's traffic on both sides. Oh yeah, the car was, oh wow, the car was completely on fire and they're spraying it from a fire truck. That's insane. So that's probably worth the slowdown, but I just sat in traffic for a while because on the other side of the highway, uh, well, I, okay, a car is on fire. I feel like everyone's gonna slow down and look at it, but it's amazing what they can do. And Boston is completely backed up behind that. I don't blame them. There was only one lane of traffic going across on 95. If you're from this area, when you hear one lane on 95, you know the pain that that's gonna cause so many people today. Otherwise, guys, I hope you get, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's a couple other folks that are talking about this kind of like whether or not this is real. You know, one good video that I really like, and I like most of his stuff, uh, heavy metal WRX. I know he got he made a video a lot sooner than I did. I just wanted to sit on all this and see if any more information was coming out because I didn't want to make this video where it's kind of a question of judgment. Do we believe them? Is this actually indication? But I think that's where we are right now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think this is the first time that we have some, you know, semi credible direction on what's going on, and it'll just be interesting to. Uh, see what happens in the next coming months. You know, keep an eye out on the channel if you want to be the first to hear what's going on. And again, the first to hear from as much real credible as I can. The reality here is if I feel like something's fake or something like that, I'm gonna give it time to marinate until I can drive some real stuff. I did reach out to the folks at Car and Driver to figure out whether or not uh, they could give me some insight on where they were getting their information. And I reached out uh, within 24 hours of them posting their article. I have not heard back yet. I will make a video if I do hear back. I'm sure if they do have like an inside source or something like that, they're not gonna give me any information, but I tried and we'll see what happens and I will keep you guys posted. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thanks for checking in. Thank you guys for supporting the channel via subscribing, liking the video, commenting, or su supporting us through purchasing some of your parts at JXR Performance. I'll see you guys in the next video.